let's look at how we can execute some of our code more than once. So this is called a loop, and that's executing something more than one time. So the default loop that we have is called a for loop. And it looks like this, a little bit similar to an if statement. The only difference is that in between the brackets here, we have to define uh, the loop itself, like how many times the loop should be executed. Now, it's not quite as simple as just putting 10 in here because it, we can create significantly more complex loops than that. So first of all, we need to figure out, uh, we need to have a counter to count which iteration of the loop we're on right now. So I'm going to create a new variable here, just call it counter, and I'm going to set that equal to zero because that means the first time through the loop, we're, at, we're starting at zero. And you'll find that with most programming, programming languages, you always start at zero, not at one. So we're starting at zero, and then let's say we want to count up to 10 is going to be where we're going to stop. So in here, inside the brackets, we're going to start by setting our counter to be what we want it to be by default. So we can go counter equals zero. Now you're probably thinking that it's a little bit repetitive to have equals zero in both of these places. And you're right, we could actually just go like that. So we've basically just created an empty variable right now. So we're setting it to zero right here. And then we're going to put a semicolon. So this is the start value. After the semicolon, we define when it ends. So we could do when counter is less than, let's say, 10. So that says each through time through the loop, we want to check to see if the counter is less than 10, and that will allow us to continue. Now, also, also, the last piece of information is how we want the counter to change each time through the loop. So let's say we want it to be counter plus plus, and that means add one on to counter every time through the loop. So what we're saying here is start at zero, and every time through the loop, check to make sure that the counter is less than 10. And if you've executed the loop, add one on to it. So the idea here would be counter starts at zero. Is counter less than 10? Yes. Okay, so we execute our code, then we add one onto it. So now counter is one. Is one less than 10? Yes. So we execute our code and we add one onto it. Is two less than 10? Yes. So we keep going. Is nine less than 10? Yes. So we execute our code. Is 10 less than 10? No. 10 is not less than 10, so our loop stops. So as an example here, let's just do uh, document.write. like that. So it will write out hello 10 times into our browser. So we refresh, here is our hello. So if I wanted to write uh, less times, I could change this down to five here. Now we get five times like that, and etc. So we're counting through our loop, whatever is in between the curly brackets here is now executing however many times we want the loop to happen. So like 10. Now there's another kind of loop called a while loop. A while loop is a little bit different in that in here we have some Boolean logic like we used in if statements. So as an example, if I was to write, uh, you know, true in there and execute this, which I'm not going to do, since this is like an if statement, the, as long as the value in between these brackets is true, then this is going to loop forever. So if I was to refresh this in my browser right now, it would actually crash the browser because it's going to loop forever and ever and ever, and it's never going to end. So if we wanted to loop for a certain thing to happen, a quick example would be maybe we could we want to collect the person's name. So var name equals something. We want to collect it. So right now, let's use prompt which is similar to alert. It'll pop up a box, but it will allow people to enter some information. So what is your name? So now we could go in here and write while not name. And what that means is as long as the name variable is equal to false, then we're going to keep looping. So as an example, let's go in here, I'll refresh. And if I hit enter and leave this blank, you'll see it's just going to keep looping and looping and looping because the name doesn't exist. So I'm going to crash the browser here. That's not really what I want to do. But maybe what I want to do instead is like, 
as long as they haven't entered something, I want to prompt again to make sure that they have entered something. So I'm going to take this and put it into my loop here. And I'll write name equals. And then up here, I'll just set the name to nothing. And then at the very end, let's just do document.write name. So this says, while the name is empty, prompt for the name and put it in the variable. And if it's empty, then it'll keep asking and asking and asking. As, as soon as it has some content inside it, it's going to write it out. So let's go back to our browser here. Let's go back and make sure that this is working. All right, so it's going to ask for our name. I'll hit enter, and it keeps asking and asking and asking until I actually type something in there, and then it spits it out. So a for loop allows us to choose how many times something happens. And a while loop is a loop that has an indeterminate amount of times. It uses some Boolean logic to determine how many times that loop should happen.